Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use an image sequence or a video to move a texture inside of Octane and Cinema 4D. So I'm actually going to show you how to take a video and make it a texture. So you can actually make a video a texture inside of Octane. This is really cool, but the trick is, is that you cannot use any of your actual video files. It must be an image sequence. So it needs to be like a JPEG, PNG, Photoshop, PSD sequence and um, the such like that. Uh, the only ones I've currently have tested is a Photoshop sequence, but um, I think there is other file formats that are supported. But without further ado, let us begin and I shall show you how to set this up. Right off the bat, I just have my Octane interface docked right here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a plane, and then we're gonna go to materials and we're gonna create a diffuse material, drag this onto our plane, and then let's go ahead Double click this diffuse material and open up our node editor. Let's dive into this right here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do right off the bat is you need to create an image texture node. And then all you have to do in here is go up to this file location here and select these three dots. And now you need to navigate to your PSD sequence. Now before you select your PSD sequence, go ahead, scroll to the bottom of that PSD sequence and make a mental note. What is the last frame of the animation? 480 for me here. So this was a little bit of a long animation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first frame and I'm just going to click open. Now notice I'm not doing image sequence or anything like that. I'm just sec selecting a single file like I normally would with every other import. Nothing special going on here. I'm not going to uh, save a copy in the project path. And by default, it's just like we loaded a plain image. Except if we select our image texture node and we go up here to animation, we have some options we can choose from. We have movie start frame, and we have movie end frame. This is very key for movie end frame. Let's go ahead and punch in that number 480. That's the final frame in our animation. And then put in your movie frame rate, how fast we want these images to display. For me, mine was rendered at 24 frames per second. So I know that's what it needs to be. And then finally, we have these modes. Now up here we have our mode and we have our timing. These normally by default are fine, but you can do some cool things, have them loop infinitely back and forth or do a ping pong kind of animation. That's kind of cool. But for here, we're just gonna do a simple direct start and stop. Next, we have our timing, exact frame, exact second, or we have a range. Range actually kind of lets you define a range of the video, so you kind of crop. Say I only want frame 35 and then frame 85 but, or sorry, 80, that was 850, or 85, and you can basically cycle between there, kind of like you're cropping it. For the sake of this tutorial, we are just going to do a simple exact frame. So now that that's set up, let's just go ahead and plug this into the diffuse of our um, texture right here. And at this point, that's all you have to do. We're done. So let's close this node editor. Let's go ahead and throw this on our plane. And let's go ahead and hit render with Octane. Now, by default in Octane, your plane is going to look a little strange. Now, um, this is because the texture that we're using is um, a PSD sequence that I rendered out in a linear color profile. So it's extremely flat. So this means that I need to go into here, into this uh, image texture. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna resize my interface real quick to make this easier for you guys to see. Let's close this. I'm gonna set my gamma to one instead of 2.2. Now this is for me. Now you're gonna have to manually go in and change this gamma for yourself depending on what you rendered it out. If you're using like a JPEG or a PNG, something that's not a raw file, that has some compression going on, it might not have this issue. But for me, because I am using a raw file, I know that for me to make it look right, how I know it, how it, uh, I know that I made it to look, that needs to be a gamma level of one. And this is correct here. So now that I have all that set up, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we need to fix this stretching. Because right by the, right off the bat, the default we have with a plane is it's a square. This is actually supposed to be a 16 by nine image. So all I have to do to fix this is simply select my material. I actually put it on twice. And I'm just gonna simply select my plane and we're gonna set this to a 16 by nine aspect ratio, which I could simply type in 16 by nine. And that'll give me the proper aspect ratio. And then I can simply just select the plane, press T and scale it up. And now it is the perfect aspect ratio. And we have everything working as it should be. And if I go ahead and of course, the big thing you've all been waiting for, start scrolling through a timeline, we're gonna see that it's moving. Now, it doesn't look like it's moved much and that's because my animation is very slow in the beginning and we need actually enough frames. So my video is 480 frames long. So let's go ahead and drag this 
way out. And make sure you do Control D on your keyboard and set your timeline to play back at 24 FPS. That's 480 frames at 24 FPS. So that is very key. Now, of course, this is for your animation. So if you're doing a 30 FPS animation, go ahead and set this to 30. Whoops, I did control save. We don't want that. But now as I scrub through, you can see that it's actually playing the animation and it's going all the way through to the very end, which is this is the end of my animation. So my full animation, as you can see, as we pan through, as we, we pan into this dragon that I rendered, we come into it, we pan around the dragon, and we kind of come in around again and we come all the way back down. So this is very cool, very powerful. Um, you can use this for all kinds of things on all kinds of textures. You can go ahead and stick this on, say, a sphere and do all kinds of crazy things. You can remap it, reproject it, do all kinds of really crazy stuff. So this is really the um, end of this tutorial. I am going to quickly throw in just as an added bonus, you can also take this same setup and throw the same thing into lights. In a previous tutorial I did, I show you how to project an image with lights. So if you go, if you want to know how to project an image with lights, feel free to check the link in the description of this tutorial, and I'll take you right to that area. And some of those members who watched that tutorial were wondering if how will we set up an image sequence. So the same process is the same. Follow through exactly how I did in the image, um, how to project lights with an image tutorial in that previous video. Follow through exactly. I show you how to set all these lights up and how to actually project an image onto an object with lights. So you can see we can make a sphere and it's actually projecting that. And then all we have to do to make everything work with an animation is simply just go into our lights that we have here, which uh, would be our light over here. We go into that image texture that we loaded in and simply select animation and do the same exact setup. So as we pan through, everything works. So thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did find it helpful, feel free to leave a thumbs up. If you didn't find it helpful, leave a thumbs down. If you have any questions at all, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And this all said, if you found this tutorial particularly helpful, feel free to um, head to my website right here, my uh, YouTube page rather, and I'll leave a link to this in the description of the video. And if you would like, you can leave a donation. It is never required, but always appreciated. I will see you guys all in my next tutorial.